RSYNC adds some overhead on top of SSH, which is already encrypting and, and all that, and so there's a lot of overhead there. And like Craig said, his CPU was kind of maxed out when it was running. It uses a lot of memory and stuff. It's, I think it's really SSH that's chewing up all that memory and, and all that CPU. Uh, but RSYNC D, look what it did. Half the time. It's about half the time, right? So, double the throughput, so yeah. you want to copy uh, 100 gigabytes worth of data, rsync D is a pretty nice way to do it. Uh, it's not that hard to use. You saw I just created a little rsync D conf file, started rsync with a dash dash daemon, and, uh, and then I, uh, I just issued my copy statement or my rsync statement. Yeah. So is it like doing multi-sending at the same time? I don't understand how it can go faster. I mean, what is it doing that <laughs> makes it go faster? Well, now the bottleneck is the network, right? Before the bottleneck, I think, was the CPU. I, I, if I had more time to really <coughs> wire this, I would do a lot more timing tests, and I would show you CPU load and memory usage and all that kind of stuff. But I think when you run rsync over SSH over the network, uh, there's an awful lot of CPU going on there. I think it's mainly the encrypting. It was probably yeah, encrypting is not... Fast. No, that's mainly good. I think that's a lot yeah. of. The and just anytime you're, you know, it's got to, it's got to suck the data in into its memory space, right. encrypt it, and push it back out to feed it onto the decrypt next thing. Decrypt it on the other side. Yeah, right. and decrypt it on the yeah, other side. Yeah, so I mean, you uh, uh, you will really notice it on both the machines because the CPUs are, are uh, going crazy doing the, the encrypting and decrypting. And because you're on an inside network here, that's why you don't have to worry about it. Right. Kind of encryption. In fact, on this on this test machine. Uh, one of the one of the drives is an encrypted volume, so oh. the, look how busy the kernel is. It's got to read the data <laughs> off an encrypted volume, so it's got to decrypt the data, read it off the disk, run through the SSH encryption stuff, push it across the network, and then uh, decrypt, it. decrypt it on the other end and write it to the disk. Uh, so anyway, uh, it's pretty big savings. It's, I think it's worth spending a couple of minutes learning about the feature of rsync D uh, to get that kind of uh, uh, performance benefit. Well, especially because you're dealing with that and yeah. files that are ten times that size. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it, it, uh, it really works quite nice. So, yeah, that's really cool. So, uh, so yeah, that's how I use our sync. Yeah. Right. Can you set up our sync D where you're pulling files from sure. a machine? Sure. I can go fetch a file from from. Uh, from another machine. Because I've used our sync also to pull the yeah. files. Yeah, it depends. I, I would, uh, in that case, you might consider making it write, uh, read only, um, you know, in your config file, so that you can go fetch files. Let's see how that works. You can go fetch files, but you can't put any files there. Okay. Right? Um, depends on the, perf on, on the uh, permissions you want to give. Uh, I, I don't like to keep our sync D running, that's why I started up manually like that, uh, because of the, the, the uh, security issues. Um, I just don't want to leave the port open out there. But yeah, you can, you can do what you said. But at that point, if you restrict it, it would be a little bit better. But not hugely so, because you can still speed that well, up. You, you can narrow it down yeah. what, it, what all it has access to as well. Right. Well, I, like I narrowed it to the temp directory, but that, you know, usually I'll. Actually, have a real directory where I'm putting the data. Right. Well, I, I use rsync mostly with um, backup PC, mm -hmm. and so I mean it needs to have full access both for pulling and pushing. Right. Right. For all, of, for all those different systems. Right. And even with backup PC, you can use rsync, and even then you can use it in an rsync over SSH mode or rsync using rsync D. Right. And I've been using it over SSH, but it would get better performance. Much better performance with, our, uh, with, with and Especially there's a, there's at least one file that's 35 for. 40 gigs. If you're over a slow network, it's not going to make any difference because it's not the CPU is slowing down. May I have your attention, please? The time is now 8.30 and the library will be closing in 30 minutes at 9 o'clock. What's going to happen in the internet? Please be advised that the internet will shut down 10 minutes before closing. The whole Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Yes. They weren't so, going to do it until they got Amazon to buy it, but now they do. Yeah. <laughs> So does this work cross platform too? I mean, it, I know you probably don't have to deal with that, but I mean, uh, does rsync work on? Does rsync work on Windows? Rsync will work on uh, Windows Share. I'm not sure. I think there's a I Windows think there's rsync binary for Windows. I think there's a Windows binary. I'm not I sure. don't know. I've uh, I've set it up with Sigwin. Yeah, but I mean, I'm just saying that it run a native like, uh, you know, uh, rsync D 
on Windows and be able to copy to it or from it. I've got customers that you know have several Windows servers in their environments, and there's honestly, I, I, what I would recommend is there's a Samba share or something like that, and then copy directly to that share. Oh, I've done, that's how I've done stuff yeah. in the past, you know. Uh, but I'm just wondering with yeah. this, and there are a lot of things that are that are cross platform anymore that seem to work pretty well. So, yeah, I really prefer the things that aren't Sigwin. Yeah, I like Sigwin. Sigwin is great, great, yeah, great for what it does, but it brings in a whole bunch of stuff. You just yeah, but you know what I mean? I just yeah, not had good experience with Sigwin. Oh. I've got this Linux library that I use on Windows a lot that's got like 120 of Linux commands that I just copy on the customer systems. And I've got diff and you know and vim and all, this, all sorts of stuff that I use a lot of. So maybe um, you need rsync into those systems. So yeah. any any uh, any more questions? Rsync, everybody happy with no, that's cool. So go yeah. forward and sing. Yeah, that's